Scott, I think this was your pick, right? If I'm not yeah. mistaken. Yeah. Yeah. This one was me. Yeah. Yeah. So I got to thank you because um, this this week we're talking about lake monsters and I had no idea, but Canadians love a good lake monster. We have tons of them. Like every mud puddle has a lake monster in it. So <laughs> it's a good one for me. <laughs> and uh, thanks to Jeremy for pointing out a few of them to me too. Because yeah, I think we outdid America <laughs> with the monsters. Maybe. Yeah, no, no. I think we got you on this one. <laughs> okay. So I don't know. Do you want me to to jump in with mine, or you guys want to go with yours, or one by uh, one? What do we want to do? You can do yours. I I don't have a full uh three, so I can't okay. do one by one. There we go. Okay, done. Okay. Well, obviously, the very first one I got to talk about is literally, you know. The monster in the room, so to speak, because we have um, Ogopogo, <laughs> and that is. It sounds like ch like is Chetsy a big thing in the states? Because when I was kind of researching, they were saying that that's you know the biggest one in the states, and that's what Ogopogo is to us. Um, it's in from Lake Okan Okanagan, and it's you know, there's so many stories about it, and there's T-shirts, and there's all the you know, fanfare that goes with this really famous monster. <laughs> I've so. heard of Champ. Uh, yeah, Champ. Champ's huge. Yeah. Champ's huge in the States and um, and Chessie, Ogle Pogo. This one, right? And Ch yeah, Champ and uh, Ogle Pogo is pretty big in the States too, though. I haven't heard of Chassis. I've no. heard of Chassis, but well, anyways, just... they seem like they're like basically the same thing, and they all have their own, you know, t-shirts and fan clubs and everything. So, um, so, anyways, I guess um, the first sighting of the Ogopogo was apparently in 1872, and then last seen on the research I was doing was 2018. But I found a clip from some people, and it actually has a picture they actually submitted it's from uh, the actual news station of a of a recent sighting like October of 2022 so I mean people are you know there's stories about Ogopogo all the time so basically Ogopogo is a famous monster with a variety of descriptions and um perverted origins so like any you know any monster like this everybody's got a different slightly different version of you know what it is and where it's from um and, uh, you know, it is one of the best documented of all lake monsters by cryptozoologists, but the specifics, of course, are always kind of vague and varying. <laughs> so, um, native Okanagan speak of uh, a secret water being with black skin, a horse head, and antlers, known as, and I don't know how to say this, but Naza Natake, I don't know, anyways. Um, and it's, a, it's supposed to have power over the lake and even there around it granting protection to travelers if it's fed and honored with live sacrifices into the lake. <laughs> um, cryptozoologists referred to the creature as Ogopogo after an English folk song. And that's, I guess, maybe why there's more than one, like they're having the same same names in other places. But um, And everybody or most people describe it like a serpentine creature with a smooth green or black skin and characteristic humps as it swims. And everybody's seen or I, I don't know if you guys seen, but everyone in Canada has seen this. There's a famous photograph and it's, um, and it looks like serpentine like or whatever. Is it the uh, four spots? This one? Um, well, that's a different, so that's, that's, uh, that's the mug, the, um, this one? Mug one. Yeah, it's like that. So there's a whole, there's so many different pictures of it. And it's always like this. It's either, really foggy in the picture or you just see a few lumps in the water they kind of all seem very similar in that they're um snake-like right yeah and i don't know some people say that with the ogopogo that is caused by thermal waves because there is such a like bump you know like that that is just sort of an optical illusion um and it's actually created by just thermal waves on the water that one and, looks pretty um, high. Yeah, I mean, that looks, you know, does that look real to you? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Because it does, like, start 
like there's a lot of blending as soon you got all this definition in these waves right and yeah. then you can kind of see where they started blending everything yeah and i mean that's how these pictures always come out right like <laughs> yeah but it, right like right here you can kind of follow this edge and yeah and it's like somebody took a fat blending marker and just <laughs> It's Gotta drawing go. of a horse in the background and blended it out. <laughs> so, anyways. Okay. So, apparently in 1926, um, one of the sightings claimed to have occurred at Okanagan Mission Beach. And um, the, the event was uh, supposedly witnessed by 30 cars of people who all claimed to have seen the exact same thing. So, that's this is the thing like there's been so many sightings and multiple people will say the same thing at the same time so it leads you to believe there's something in there i mean i know sturgeon fish and things like that people say that because they get really big right mm -hmm. um so it could be them surfacing and stuff but there has been you know group sightings of it so um and then in 1968, um, Art Folden filmed what he claimed to be footage of the creature showing a large wake moving across the water. I've seen that before too. And a computer analysis of the footage concluded it was a solid three-dimensional object. And in 2011, a cell phone video captured two dark shapes in the water. And a suggested explanation was that the video shows two logs. Um, Ogopogo has been seen by First Nations people since you know the 19th century. And the most common description, the, it kind of varies again, but the most common kind of basic description is that it's 40 to 50 feet long, so it's long, um, sea serpent. And British cryptozoologist Carl Chucker has categor categorized the Ogopogo as a many hump variety of lake monster um, and suggested it might be a, a primitive serpentine whale, such as the Basilosaurus. I don't know if I said that right. I'm not good with dinosaur type names <laughs> um, that lived 40 million years ago. So, so that's actually kind of plausible to me that, you know, if we have these great big creatures and if they're in deep, deep water, it could be some sort of dinosaur leftover. Well, how deep is this lake? I, well, that I don't know, but it's huge. Like okay. it is huge and it's deep, right? And all of these places where these things are, when I said mud puddle, it's actually like, it's big, big lakes where they're um, usually seen. So, and then um, it's also, um, you know, people think that the sightings are, you know, common, common animals like otters and floating logs and all this stuff. And then- um, I saw a beaver also, today. Didn't look beaver? like it. Yeah, it didn't look like a dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you never know. It depends how many you know drinks you're having on the fishing boat. <laughs> Maybe that makes a that makes a difference. But there are there's some people that um well they say it's a myth, but there's a uh, some people that think that they're in the middle of the lake. There's a cave, and that's where Ogopogo lives. And so we were talking about caves last week. Um, on Tuesday there it was, which is kind of interesting because caves work so well for all of these things, right? If there's mm -hmm. big cave systems everywhere, especially for an underwater animal like that it, it really could hide you know so um so anyways so there is two scientists um that have agreed to analyze the remains of a mysterious looking specimen found along the shores of the Okanagan Lake so I don't they said mysterious looking but I don't know if it's like a serpentine thing that's 50 foot long that they found or not but anyway some weird thing washed up and they're going to analyze it and um, it was sent to, to uh, a researcher in Ontario to, for DNA testing. And the carcass itself is in a, being examined by a scientist here in Alberta. <laughs> and um, at the time this was written, the remains were found two weeks ago by a Kelowna resident, Dan Popoff, as he paddled his kayak near the far end of Lake Joe Road. So, and apparently this guy, and it is kind of a snaky looking thing. It's just an artist rendering that I'm looking at though. So it's like somebody drew a picture of it, but it's a snaky looking thing. So anyways, Did we'll you see. send me a picture? Or? Not, not of okay, this, not because okay. it's just a hand drawn thing or whatever, well, it's not a photo. Let me know. Cause I've got Thetis and then four spots. So that was the first one I brought up. Okay. <laughs> 
And then, yeah, so I guess we'll see if, if we'll, I'd be interested to see what the DNA says about this monster, right? Like, yeah, that, you know, finally somebody's found a carcass and, you know, we'll see what it actually is, right? Most of them end up be, being basking sharks. But right. you guys, you guys aren't connected to the ocean there, right? Right. So there shouldn't yeah. be, right? So, and then I just, in, in pop culture, um, the History Channel's Monster Quest featured it um, in series three episode, like Demons. <laughs> and there's been a, uh, the Evaporators released a song titled Ogopogo Punk in 2016. <laughs> so... That, that little video clip that is of the most recent sighting which was apparently just a few months ago in 2022 so let me we'll, we can take a look and see what you think uh let me get my video shared sharing sound let's go by the way uh, i'm drinking kraken even though that's like Kraken. A, yeah that's as close to lake monsters i could get i guess it's more ocean but <laughs> Okay, there it is. We came by it the first time. That's where I, th I thought it was a log. On their last sale of the season, Dale Hanshar, his wife Colleen, and their neighbor Myrna Germain Brown saw something shocking beneath Okanagan Lake's surface. Nice easy breeze cruising out across the lake and we saw something in the water. And as a boater, I was just looking, you know, is this something dangerous that needs to be marked so somebody doesn't run into it? We went by it. It looked like a log in, down into the water, but didn't look quite right. That's when they snapped a photo. It wasn't until we got home, we got looking at it and zoomed in on it that we, we were like... Puzzled. The horns are three, those, what, if, if we yeah. can call them that. So what do you guys modules. think? Yeah. Oh, oh I've seen that feet. photo. And then it goes out from there. And, oh, it would have been... He only got the big. one photo? And that's yeah. why... I, I thought yes. if it was Ogopogo sleeping, I don't want to be here. Now we've yeah, shown the photograph to our expert clear. and he was surprised by what could he saw. However, down. he does have a theory of what it could be if not the legendary lake monster Ogopogo. I am not going to lie. As soon as I opened up, I yeah. did have a moment of, of hesitation. Like, whoa, this is not like something I've seen before because you immediately see the horns. And a lot of classic depictions of lake monsters, people will note horns of some type at first glance it does appear to be monstrous looking that you're looking at some head but you know taking into consideration um being able to zoom in and the coloration and you know the location in which a head would naturally be in relation to a, a leg or a wing um it, it it appears to be some sort of aquatic bird whether it be a, a goose or a duck what? or something like that whether a duck is he or, uh, or Ogopogo <laughs> itself maybe a the photo continues roots, to keep the legend of the mysterious the lake bird. monster alive and well sydney morton global news Kelowna. so what do you think of that picture <laughs> i think i think it's evidence you think Oop. so Oop. That look, i mean it doesn't look, look like a bird like what, what's the horn things it looks like nothing else but a classic depiction of a lake monster like what else could it be so you're convinced, like that's your you do you that's they exist. I've seen pictures of Loch Ness enough to know it exists. So, what do you think, I mean, Scott? Was that convincing for you? Hold on, I had a whole bunch of pop ups and shit hit me afterwards. Um, I don't know. I mean, it looks pretty clear photo. I think it could be a like a log upside down with the roots, but it could be. I don't know. I don't know why it, you it wouldn't have taken like more a than face one. To me. Like it looks like a dog type. Face. Yeah, like it's got hair on its face or something. Yes. That's why I was thinking roots. Why did he only take one picture? That makes no sense. I don't, I don't because he know. said he, he, he said when they got home, they when they looked they looked at it finally, and that's when they realized what it was. Like they didn't they just snapped the picture really fast. But yeah. I mean, I don't know. I mean, that's that. The caves underneath the, the lake, though, I mean, that's part of what they say works for Loch Ness is the caves going out to the ocean from the loch. So it looks well, a lot better back, than most. If you think back to the to the native description, it's a being with black skin, a horse head and antlers. And so to me, that looked like an animal head. Like I, I thought kind of more a wolf or something, but it does have antler. I don't know. Anyways, it is one of the best pictures I've seen. And it is one of the most documented 
like like I said, there's been groups of people and they see it and you know, it, it never goes away. It's you know, people are out, you know, forever seeing it. So, you know, mm -hmm. something's there. I don't know. And what do you guys what do you think it is? Is this a you know leftover dinosaur type creature or is this uh left it's either a leftover dinosaur type creature or just another creature we never knew existed? Yeah. I mean, there's tons of creatures we don't know that exist. I mean, right. it's... Like, we've only explored so much of the water, right? The ocean, it's only like 10% of the ocean, but yeah. they never give you a clear answer on how much of I'm just saying, the fresh th water we've searched. This is why I don't go in any water <laughs> for, further than I w can walk in unless it's a damn pool. <laughs> Well, and again, if we think about caves, I think if there is big cave systems all throughout, you know, um, that oh, makes so much sense that stuff could be hiding anywhere. There are so many caves. There are so many caves underwater. It's ridiculous. We can't even map them all. Well, right. and then yeah. uh, underwater aquifers and streams and rivers and stuff like, like there's a tunnel I was researching a while ago that connects from like. I don't know, lower than Ohio all the way up into uh, New York. Just a big-ass cave system. Some of it's underwater. Yeah. Oh my God, there's probably all sorts of shit we don't know exists. <laughs> I mean, it makes me think of that. It makes me think of this uh, Loch Ness movie I had to watch a while back that they were talking about on a podcast I was listening to. And, like, Nessie and that movie came up on land and killed the hunter, so. It would Maybe kill the could... hunter? I didn't know that. Uh, it's a movie. It's a horrible movie with a uh, horrible okay. nasty in it, but it's, it's 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 funny to watch. I forget uh, what it's called. Monsters Among Us, uh, Knights of the Round Table did an episode about it. It, it was pretty funny. Hey, well, that is that is our most famous monster. <laughs> but like I said, there's so many more. Like, oh my gosh! So um, I wanted to do one that's a little. Most of them are serpentine like, but um, the Thetis Lake monster is the Canadian lizard man, <laughs> which sounds like a description for a dating site. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> um, so this guy was sighted twice on Vancouver Island, um, and the creature was first encountered by two teenage boy boys in 1972, and the Canadian Mountain Police sprang up into investigation from that. So that's funny, they actually got the, the, the cops involved. <laughs> Um, and he was described as being aquatic reptilian humanoid standing five feet tall. This isn't really big, right? But I guess, I mean, if he looks like that, I guess it's big enough to be scared of. Um, That's the creature was, from the Black Lagoon, isn't it? <laughs> I don't know. It was, some, it, was, it was with the information, so apparently that's... <laughs> Anyways, um, so... Um, and it res resembled a human lizard with a large head that was covered in barbed spikes. So yeah, I mean, he doesn't have spikes on his head, but anyways. And four days later, two men reported the same creature in, this, in the lake they were swimming, and they stated that the lizard was covered in silvery scales. And in a week, another man reported that his uh, pet tigu lizard, an aggressive lizard that can grow four feet long, went missing. <laughs> so... Possibly it was a pet lizard. <laughs> anyway, so the police, you know, they closed the investigation, stating that the lizard, what man was just this lizard. But lots of locals still believe that the Thetis Lake lizard man is alive and in the lake. And um, the Thetis Lake is the first regional conservation area in Canada. It was established in 1958 and it spans 831 hectares um, of protected forest and parkland. So, um, there you go again with the metric system. Oh. <laughs> Just can't help yourself. <laughs> so, anyways. <laughs> um, and so, the two boys in seven, 1972 or whatever, it was reported in the newspaper. Well, I guess if they, phoned the, you know, if they got the cops involved, obviously it was a big news story. So, a newspaper um, article was written about it. And they, they claimed that the two teens were chased at the beach um, by a creature. That resembled Gil Man from the Creature of the Black Lagoon. So I guess that's where this comes from. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so good job. Yeah, good job. <laughs> didn't didn't and, the first people that reported this like didn't 
one of them come with like a gash on his hand? Yeah, or? that's exactly what was okay. I was just gonna say. Reported in this newspaper article, one of the teenagers uh, had been slashed on the hand by the creature, and he said it had three webbed toes and fingers, along with barbed fins on its skull, arms and legs. So yeah. And it was, they described it as roughly triangular in shape, about five feet. And um, at the time, the, the cops thought that the boys did seem sincere, and that's why they investigated until the guy said he lost his lizard. And then, unfortunately, two of the four witnesses out of all the sightings of this thing came forward and said that their, hoax, their sightings were actually hoaxes to get attention. Mm. <laughs> and two stuck to their story. So... Anyways, and there's similar creatures that have been reported in, in like I Ohio and Delaware and Louisiana and North Carolina. So these lizard men creatures living in the lakes, um, again, just like Ogopogo, they're they pop up all over the place. So what do you think about this one? Is this a a pet lizard? Is this a creature we just don't know about? Is this believable or is this just some bullshit? <laughs> I mean we've covered lizard men before. It's yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm Could going same same answer for the Loveland Frog Man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on, Scott. If cocaine crocodiles exist, then the lizard man can exist. <laughs> I'm just impressed that the cops like sprang to action over this. You know, two teenagers come in and say the story, and and they start investigating it right away. I'm, that's well, you know. <laughs> I think these. Well, I think well, it's Canada, so what else they have to do? But. I think these two teenagers also just maybe came out of the movies seeing a double creature feature or something, and they wanted to make up a story. Yeah. Yeah. And it doesn't say which two of the four witnesses um, did come forward and say it's a hoax. And, if, uh, you know, maybe it's the kids. I don't know. But anyways. Well, the but time, I, thought... I, I just listened to a show about this, and the timeline they had was the first two, I guess they were older teenagers. Uh, the one that got the cut on the hand, they came out and then the other two kids said it like a week after they aired that movie, that Lake Monster movie <laughs> on the TV. So like the first two were believable, but the second younger teenagers, they were trying to just have some pull, fun, trying to have some pull fun. Fat, yeah. Pull a fast yeah. one or someone. Yeah. Yeah. But, and then, you know, the guy who lost his lizard, I mean, does that sound plausible? He just lost his pet and the thing was just I, living on in the water? Because that could happen, really. I don't think anybody is going to mistake a pet lizard for a big lizard man. Like, that seems a little weird. Again, well, there, depends on how many drinks you've had or, you know, whatever. <laughs> is the there situation. a time frame of when this stuff happened? That was like kind of the... Well, it was in 1972, right? But like winter, summer, because like that lizard ain't making it. It was the same thing with the Loveland Frogman. They tried to say that somebody saw the pet lizard, except then it was supposed to be like two foot of snow on the ground. So there's no way a big, big ass iguana is going to be climbing fences yeah. with two foot of snow on the ground. It doesn't. Well, there's no, there's it was August, in, August. So oh, okay. it's, it's summertime it's in 1972. It's still warm. Yeah. Yeah, it might be. And then four, four days after the boys said that, though, um, two men claimed to have spotted it on the opposite side of the lake. So there was those two. And then according to one, the guy said it came out of the water, looked around, then went back in the water, and then we ran. So, yeah. Jeremy they, sold. He sold. Two for two. <laughs> <laughs> No, yeah. I, I, I'm all for lizard men, but not that everybody knows that they have to look like Kirk Connors in uh Spider Man comics, they can't look like the creature from Black Lagoon. Come on now, <laughs> yeah. This one I don't know about, I think it's and, and and also, I mean, that's 1972. Why has no one seen them since, right? I guess, unless you didn't, didn't make it through the summer or winter, but yeah, yeah. Ogo Bogo. I mean, there's a lot of sightings. A lot, a lot. So, oh yeah, been around. I, it's, it's a lot more believable than the sky, I think. Yeah, yeah. Nessie type uh, sightings, man. Maybe they are just going through aquifers and stuff. Right? Maybe it's like place. one, one or two monsters, and they just, you know, 
No, I don't think it's one. It ain't just one or two. It's definitely yeah. like they're they're breeding. They're doing the pediosaur uh, play th- playing there. But well, great definitely... great whites travel continents and they, they go do. into That's places yep. we have no. We you can't even follow them. You know they go into those some of those trenches. It's like. Pretty amazing. Yeah, that's true. That is true. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then the last monster I have is called the Mug Mug Womp, um, who's also known as Old Pessie. And that's uh, the monster of Lake Tem- Temescam. I can't even say this. Temescam Scam You, <laughs> Canada. <laughs> Anyways, sorry. I'm Canadian. I can't even say that properly. Um, Damn Canadians in their names. Whatever. <laughs> it's all good, eh? <laughs> Anyways, this lake is on the border of uh, the provinces of Ontario and Quebec. And um, so, according to Mayor Jack Dent in 1979, newspaper article that introduced this cryptid to the public eye, the term mugwomp is derived from an Algon- Algonquin word that purportedly means fearless sturgeon. So, again, you know, I was saying some of these people think they are sturgeon because they grow huge, those fish, right? Sometimes they'll pull them up, you know, out of rivers and stuff, and they're amazingly big. And because, and they're kind of serpent, like, they kind of look snake-like. They're long and skinny kind of fish. So, anyways. They're um, prehistoric. I mean, they, yeah, they have, like, like. And they grow huge. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy. It's, anyways. So, the mugwomp was once described as being a massive lake sturgeon, but um, modern reports consistently describe it as green, brown, or gray legless beast that surpasses 50 feet. So, again, just like Ogopogo, like that's, you know, way bigger than you think a, you know, fish could ever be or whatever. And, um, and then, of course, this 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 monster's always had some notoriety too. So the papers in the seventies picked up the story and began, you know, sensationalizing everything. And um, it's been it has a, a variety of names: Alice Peeper, <laughs> and all these different names or whatever. Um, but the sightings, despite all the misdirection of the articles and all the kind of made up fanfare stuff, there has been actual sightings that were supposed to be quite um, serious, um, reported all through summer in the 80s and occurring up until like 2015, there was a video claiming to have caught it on camera and I don't have the video of it. Um, but some people think that it's a sturgeon still, and some people think it's a group of otters swimming in a single file line. And that's that picture of the three lumps in the water. That's actually this, this guy here. It's, and people think that that's otters. So what do you think? I don't think it's otters. You think it's a sturgeon? It doesn't look like a sturgeon either. No, it doesn't. I don't know what the hell it is. I mean... It looks, it looks like the old pictures of Nessie they always took. Right, yeah. And it's what the old sailors in the 16, 1700s described sea serpents as looking like. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think it's otters. I mean, it could have been somebody who placed some decoy things, or it could be a creature. But it is, it's like bigger up here. Yeah. And then it slowly gets smaller. Like, it's still pretty far away from shore. There's nothing really for size comparison. These waves look bigger over there. I don't know. I'd say that's at least a foot and a half, two foot off of the water compared to these ripples. Right, yeah. Yeah. It's so it, it would be big, right? And that's, you see, Ogopogo pictures are always like this too, where it's kind of lumps in water or whatever. And so this one in uh, 1995, one of the sightings was a couple guys, um, they were ice fishing. And <laughs> um, they saw this black glistening head through their fishing hole. In, uh, and they said it had protruding eyes, one of which was trained on them and gave the impression that it was actually sizing them up. So fairly intelligent. <laughs> and then another ice fisherman reported he'd seen the cre- creature completely out of the water one night and that it had a s- head similar to a dinosaur and it was long enough to curl around a number of fishing pots at once. So that's big. And a married couple claimed to have witnessed the mugwomp swimming in 1978 and they reported it had a humpback and no fins. And Chuck Poole, 
the first person to ha have his encounter with the mug mugwump documented and published, he claimed that the animal looked like a person-sized sturgeon. So he's and the most common kind of description is it's uh has a body of a serpent and the head of a horse. So very similar to Ogopogo too, right? An animal, yeah. you know, type thing. So I would think they're the same thing, just in different places. Yeah, sturgeon don't do that though. Right. And they stay really low. Like sturgeon are hanging around the top, right? Like when they get caught, it's usually, you know, they're getting pulled up from the bottom, from the depths. So yeah, it's on the and bucket. Four of them, four of them aren't just freaking like sitting there in the water like that either. Like it ain't gonna happen. Yeah. So so yeah, I don't know. That's it for and then um I did pull some there's also in Lake Ontario, the Lake Ontario serpent. So exactly the same thing. And there is so many sightings of that, um, that one too. So it, it's very, very similar though. So so lots of these in Canada. I have to believe it's some like it's something real, other than I'm not sure about lizard guy, but yeah. as for these, I feel <laughs> like there's enough in enough different places with enough credible witnesses that yeah, there's something <laughs> they're all similar too right yeah. which would mean it was like some sort of species that maybe it just lives deep right yeah like yeah. not all has to. i mean we would never know what like a ore fish is or any of this crap that's at the bottom of the ocean if you know we didn't have the technology we have today and we're not going into lakes for that so right well, so like that. Why do you think that is, Scott? The government? Probably. <laughs> Hillary Clinton specifically. That's what I'm thinking. Hiding the monsters. <laughs> <laughs> One way or the other, she's hiding monsters. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, well, you're done? That's, that's it. Yeah, that's... So I obviously picked the uh lake monsters i was actually looking for fishing spots in the area <laughs> and um yeah it's just something i've always been curious about i know i told you guys that story before but i was fishing in the canal where i was living in florida and i was in my kayak and then all of a sudden i felt something with like a lot of body mass slowly like rub up against my kayak and sort of lift the kayak out of the water a little bit and go back under and i mean it is connected to the gulf coast so i mean it it wasn't uncommon to see manta rays or the little dolphins or manatees um and then like there were a couple alligators that lived on that canal <laughs> system but then bull sharks they actually swim into fresh water and they swim pretty close into fresh water. So in uh, North America, there have been bull sharks. Let me get my screen shared here. No sound. So there have been, uh, you guys' faces went right over it. Bull sharks, there we go, that have swam a thousand miles upstream so mm. this is a bull shark these guys are all in their winter attire it looks like snow all over the place and they got this bull shark but then they've mm. also swam in the uh let me get screen share again in the amazon river they've swam as far as 2,500 miles up the Amazon River. That's like farther than me and Jeremy are. That's farther than all of us are from each other. That's that's almost the whole uh, United States. So that's pretty crazy. But they do live yeah. in fresh, uh, fresh water. And I wanted to show this video. This will lead into make, or lake monsters. Just hang in there with me. Okay. Let me get sound going. So this My is going to be... My beard's turning gray, Scott. <laughs> this is going to be a freshwater pond. Uh, this might be it. Bite. Come and play around this course near Brisbane, but be on your guard.
Oh, shit. Bard at the 14th tee, because this is probably the world's only shark-infested golf course. In the lake, in the middle of the course, live half a dozen man-eating bull sharks. During heavy floods, they were washed onto the course from a nearby river. When the water receded, the sharks were stranded. So this is all fresh the golf water. Course flooded the Logan River, um, so it flooded at the time. There you go. The general manager of Carbrook Golf Club gets some interesting reactions from visiting players. You can't believe how close you are. That's probably the the biggest thing. I mean, you're only you'd be six feet away, you know. So they just sort of normally they just step back and they they say something I won't repeat. But um, yeah, they just amaze. The sharks are thriving in the well-stocked lake, even breeding. A couple are close to ten foot long. They're sometimes given the odd treat. One even had a nibble at our camera. Okay. What's it like working? So that is. Hold on, let me get this turned off. A 10 foot long bull shark in a freshwater pond on a golf course. And this video, you can see how old that video is. I check in on these pretty frequently, and now there's supposed to be about 12 of them in that, <laughs> in that pond. But uh, there's supposed to be sharks in the Great Lakes as well, right? So this just uh, sort of... Huh? Awesome. Possibly. I've never heard that one before, but Oh, I've watched tons of videos on that. But it it's just the fact that they they would tell you, you know, ten, fifteen years ago that there was no way a bull shark was living in a fucking in a mm -hmm. lake. Water. Yeah. So but we've caught them a thousand miles up the Mississippi. In Ohio, they're in freshwater rivers all the time. People are constantly catching them. Let me see what my next but then, another uh, animal that shouldn't be where it, it was found. Sewer gears. Well, in 2003, this alligator was found in the Provo River, where I live in Utah. Uh, it connects to the Utah Lake. And it was just found cruising around the fucking river in 2003. And the, another thing we just learned about alligators is they can actually freeze solid. They can sit underneath the water for 24 hours without breathing, and they can go over a year without eating. So for all these lake monsters, Nessies, all this shit, like we try to make these ideas that like, well, where would it? Where's its food source coming from? Where's its blah, blah, blah coming from? But these creatures alone show us that they can do a hell of a lot more than we can do. But, uh, yeah, then I'm not saying that 100% I think these are dinosaurs, but another weird-ass thing that happens in the water this is a lake i really want to go to and there is a little bit of lore this is crater lake in oregon oh I, yeah i saw this one so this is where is it uh, the old man of the lake this is a 30 foot log that sticks four foot up out of the water and has just been spinning this lake since 1896 was the first time that it was ever recorded. So it's probably been doing it longer than that. Scientists have no idea why the hell this thing hasn't sunk yet. <laughs> or beached itself. But it's just been floating around this lake in circles for over 100 years. But the other crazy thing about Crater Lake is this thing is 19 or 1,000. 949 feet deep. It's the deepest lake in all of U.S. and it's the ninth deepest lake in the world. So God knows what's down at the bottom of that. <laughs> right? Like how many aquifers and rivers and crazy shit is connected to this thing? The lore is not that, that big in it, but I would love to go there with some shark tackle and just like bait up 
a 30 foot striper and throw it down to the bottom and see what we got. And that, you know, that's another problem with these lake monsters is they don't, when they're trying to catch them, right? What, what kind of tackle are you using? Like what would they eat? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you got to be throwing out big ass hooks with 50 foot steel leader. Like you're going to have to go at it the right way. So if anybody wants to uh, pay somebody to go research for these lake monsters, I'm the guy. <laughs> Okay, so now, yeah. we'll, huh? No, Scott, they use humans as bait to get the muck them up. Come on now. <laughs> okay, I'll I'll uh, I'll do the fishing, and Jeremy can be the bait. On the hook. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I ain't that gullible. I'll find someone who is. Okay, so uh, my first actual monster, I was researching fishing spots a couple weeks ago. And I came upon the Bear Lake monster. So this is two hours away from me. And this, this legend dates back to 1868. And it was actually a story in the Deseret News. And there was four people who saw this Loch Ness style monster. It's more of like a serpent with 18 inch long legs. Let me throw up the depiction. Bear Lake Monster. There we go. So that's kind of what it, this one's supposed to look like. But uh, the first guy, he was standing on the side of the hill and he saw it. And, um, you know, he, he thought it was just a person or something that was stuck there. And then he realized that the waves weren't moving it. And that where the thing was standing, it would have had to have been huge. And that's when he noticed the horse-like face, just like all the other ones. And then three ladies saw it the next day. So um, that when they saw it, they said the thing was swimming in the water faster than a horse. And that's when they reported this news article. And these people were so believable that Brigham Young, the head of the Mormon church at the time, actually sent an expedition out to try to catch this guy. And then P.T. Barnum, sent somebody out to try to catch him too nobody ever caught him there are sightings still today i saw one of a guy i think he was shooting carp on his kayak but then out of nowhere the water just did these big waves they don't look that big when you're watching the gopro footage but like from seeing my gopro footage to how big those waves are versus what this dude's doing these things had to be like four or five foot waves that just popped right in front of the GoPro out of nowhere. Um, but this lake is over 200 feet deep. So I'm thinking there is a good chance there might be something there. Looks like a friendly guy. He's got teeth. <laughs> yeah, it's like a little alligator thing. Okay, and then my last one is just sort of local lore. So this is one that we used to pass around at school and all of our friends would talk about but this is the bottomless ponds so i actually used to go fishing here and the first time so this has been gated off since before i was alive but the first time i went fishing here uh, i found a i don't know if it was a bobcat or like a smaller mountain lion but i saw the bottom jaw found the bottom jaw of that and then we'd see these little like stick like things coming up out of the water it could have been turtles we didn't have turtles in any of the other lakes but the story goes is right over here in the corner this is sierra highway this is like the the main highway that takes you from like bakersfield to hollywood and um there was a school bus that drove off into this and this is supposed to be on some sort of stream. This is the San Andreas fault line right here. So this is like dead center of the fault line. So they don't even really know where the stream goes. But in the 20s, that school bus was supposed to have dro driven off the side of the road and went in there. And um, it just sank to the bottom eventually. And they sent a diver in to get it. And the diver was never found. 
Jeez. and then since then i mean since the 20s like people have been saying there's either some sort of lake monster in this thing some people say they see dorsal fins but that that's it you've been fishing in there i have multiple times first first time i went fishing there was my wife my friend brandy and me and we stopped on the side of the road to find a way to get in without the police like knowing what we were doing mm -hmm. and this dude and his girlfriend pulled up in this busted like nissan sentra where they uh <laughs> They had saran wrap around the window because all the windows were busted out. So they had saran <laughs> wrap around the window. And the dude just stopped on this busy road, walked up to us, that asked us if we wanted to buy math. And it's like, not here, buddy. <laughs> but yeah, no, I never really caught anything there. Wasn't no, that. no dorsal fins came up while you were I'm, fishing? <laughs> I never saw dorsal fins. I saw the like turtle looking head things. And then we found that that um meth dealer sort of cat jaw and the meth dealer <laughs> and their needles so <laughs> you should and and that place is supposed to be haunted too there's a lot of people that say there's that. a lot of stuff going on in there yeah yeah no nope. hmm. it's well, haunted by the ghosts of all the people that got eaten by the lake monster come on scott could be it's always scary the when they send in divers and stuff like the rescuer to investigate and we just never return. <laughs> I uh I spent probably about 20, maybe 15, 20 minutes trying to find newspaper clippings. I couldn't do it. Mm. But would have been cool yeah. if I could have confirmed the school bus went into that. Oh, so that's just sort of a local legend kind of thing you don't know that for sure i'm not not 100 percent. no i can't find newspaper articles so i heard there were newspaper articles hmm. interesting story it. anyways <laughs> yeah definitely it's all you jeremy all right well why don't you see let me see what you got my picture saved under i'll tell you which one to bring up i got uh we got swamp thing Lizard Man and Aloe Pond Nick. Uh, I'm gonna guess it's Swamp Thing, even though I'm not sure about that. Let me see. Hold Swamp Thing's like the hand drawing. Um, with the moon on his that. head. Maybe, maybe. I don't, I'm not sure. It's okay. been a minute. Well, let's. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Uh, that one. No, nope, that's not it. Then it's got to be Lizard Man. It's yeah, because the other one. Yeah, there you go. Oh, he looks and cute. It, <laughs> well, he's he's not a lizard man. He is technically an ugly merman. <laughs> okay. And they're reported across the world, and they also could be called ugly mermaids for the female versions, and they also could be called the all encompass all encompassing ugly merbeam. They were first sighted in Thunder Bay, Lake Superior, in 1782. A voyager named Venant St. Germain was camped on the shore of Lake Superior across from Isle Royale. He was watching the sunset with three comrades and an elderly Ojibwe woman when an unusual creature about 75 yards offshore caught his eye. It appeared to him, and these are in quotes, to have the upper part of its body above the waist formed exactly like that of a human being, and seemed to him about the size of a child of seven or eight years of age. Its countenance bore an exact resemblance to those of the human face, and it had brilliant eyes, a raised hand of fully formed fingers, and a dark complexion. Gun in hand, however, St. Germain was preparing to shoot the creature and save it for science. You're going to shoot it to save it for science. Yeah. <laughs> Love that logic. When the Native American woman attacked him, during their tussle, the creature disappeared below the water. The woman yelled at him for his wicked intentions. She explained that the mermaid was a god of the lakes and that merely trying to, by trying to kill it, he would raise a storm powerful enough to kill them all. And for the next three days, a little group of travelers were stranded on shore by gale force winds and crashing waves. 
Although St. Germain encountered another fur trader who claimed to have seen a similar creature in the same part of Lake Superior, most people doubted his story. This led him to provide sworn testimony of his encounter with the merman of Lake Superior before a Canadian court in 1812. Only in Canada, folks. 1812, we're fighting our butts off in America, and in Canada, they're talking about mermen in court. <laughs> Priorities. Priorities. <laughs> Some of the some of the possible explanations for this was that it's a vodyanoi, a frog-faced creature from Russia, and also possibly it could be a bearded seal, which are normally found in the Arctic Circle, but are able to turn up in surprising places, including the Baltic Sea, Japan, and even inland areas of Florida. The Vodaya Noivi have been reported around Olonets, Karelia, and joining parts of Russia and Finland, which are not far off from the Beard Seal's general location. Other possibly related creatures include an aquatic dwarf, which wears ragged clothing and a broad hat from Central Europe. And being described as a large amphibian, which moves along the current like a log, sometimes referred to as the Piskov crocodile. While this crocodile is less likely to be a seal, it could very well be the simple case of a giant salamander as well. So, and another explanation is that so, some of the reports of these ugly merfolk is female or otherwise tuskless walruses. Walruses may be considered ugly by human standards with their ample amounts of wrinkled skin and almost human faces, just like my dogs. <laughs> Although they are naturally pelag pelagic creatures swimming throughout the Arctic Circle, it is not known for them to be found well, of course, and some of the tussless members may have at various times found their way into freshwater habitats through one way or another. So I hear a lot of explanations, but I really don't hear an answer. So I don't know. You, you I think, don't know. A walrus is the closest looking thing, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Isn't it in the freshwater, though, didn't you say? It can be. Walruses can go in the freshwater, according to what I just read. Is there a river that connects them? It's Lake Superior, so there's a bunch of rivers that go into the Great Lakes. Okay. And it's right by the ocean, too. Have you seen the people surf in the Great Lakes? I think I've seen, like, videos of it here and there. That is insane, dude. It's like freezing cold, and they're in there oh, God, surfing. Yeah. Jesus Christ. It's radical, dude. But yeah. but that's that's all we have for our ugly mermen here, or for any of our female watchers, possibly your last date from Tinder. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been too long for a date, because that he looks cute to me, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, Let's go to the picture, Scott, that you didn't already uh, show. Okay. Let's share the screen here. Do, 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 do. Yes. And this is a Canadian monster I stole, Deborah, but the Ponique or Ponic. I don't know how, how you pronounce it, but it's from Lake Pohinigamook, Canada. Is I this think a show flyer? Names. Uh, I don't know. I think it looks like it, eh? Yeah, it looks like a show flyer. Ah, well, I don't, I don't speak Canadian, eh? So I can't read it <laughs> or French, whatever it is. But <laughs> hello, place. <laughs> uh, that's what it sounds like. It says. But there have been over a thousand sightings of this creature. They all describe it differently, but. Overall, it's a 35 to 60 foot long creature with two or three humps, a sail across the whole spine of the creature, flippers, a barrel like neck, and horse shaped head. Kind of like Ogopogo and every other Palladiosaur out there. But it was seen in 1873 by a lumberjack, Louis Brube. He saw a huge fish in the lake. Benoit Lavazil saw, I think they pronounced that. So a 25, 30 feet long creature poking out water and diving back. In 1933, a new road opened across the lake, and people saw Ponique more often. In 57, Father Leopold Plante 
saw a black thing with two humps suddenly appear, then dive to the depths of the lake. In 1981, Mrs. Sylvie Thiriot Lavoie saw something large swimming fast underwater. One of the recent sightings was by Father Calixte Berube. Freaking names in this stuff. My God, Canadian. French. But yeah, French can you Canadians. translate this for us, Deborah? No. No, no. I, I do not speak. I mean, the mystery monster. <laughs> okay. I mean, the yeah, mystery the, mystery, <laughs> the, the, mysteri- the mysterious monster. Yeah. <laughs> but, but no, it's Scott, don't you watch South Park? There's a big difference between Canadians and French Canadians. They don't like each other. <laughs> I thought they had to learn both languages. <laughs> well, my education on French sadly is left back in, I think, about grade seven or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, the, 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 the good father, the most recent saying of this thing, was at four o'clock in the afternoon. He saw a back with a dorsal fin. The creature kept appearing and disappearing. So basically, the possibilities for this, as people say, are large unknown species of fish that live in lakes. So helpful. Uh, Nothosaur that survived in modern days. Oh, here you go, Scott. A giant otter. Yeah. Unknown species of, of, of cetaceans that live in lakes. A classical plesiosaurus or a classical sea serpent. So basically, there is no explanation besides what they pull from every other plesiosaur looking thing out there. So, I mean, and how, how far is that lake from you, Can uh, Lake from you, Deborah? Um, oh, I'm that's called to Canada. <laughs> that is that's far, far. I'm safe here. I'm in Alberta. <laughs> I'd already heard of that lake, so I had to. I didn't even look up where it was, but you can leave that picture for now, though, because that this one I'm gonna do next was it's another plesiosaurus type monster but it's a local one to where i grew up so i'll go with it and it's the hudson river monster or kipsy there is no currently no scientific evidence for its existence although unusually large manatee was spotted in the river at various locations between manhattan and Poughkeepsie, new york in 2006 which Poughkeepsie, new york was a half hour south of where i grew up and after i graduated from high school actually i think i remember hearing about that but and it's also possible that the Hutch River Monster is as a synonymous name for the Canadian New York Lake Monster Champ. So Champ might just be traveling up and down the river. Mm-hmm. But that's the closest one to where I grew up, so I had to go with it. But you can go to that first picture you showed by accident there. Okay. Swamp thing coming up. Mm -hmm. This is the Charles Mills Lake Monster. In 1959, three young men from Ohio claimed to have had a face-to-face encounter with one of the most bizarre critters ever to emerge from a seaweed-strewn lake bed. An encounter so brief and perplexing that even most cryptozoologists don't know what to make of it. Much like its Highland counterparts on the flip side of the Atlantic, Ohio proves to be one of the preferred stopping grounds in the U.S. for more than a few unique species of aquatic-based cryptids. Far and away, the most notorious of these beasts are the small bipedal frog-like fiends known as the Loveland Frogmen. But the Charles Mill Lake Reservoir, located about 100 miles away from Loveland in Mansfield, Ohio, is said to boost its own very own aquatic oddity. Nestled in between Cleveland and Columbus, the Mill Lake Reservoir was constructed in 1935 by damming the Black Fork of the Mohican River. Known for its voluminous catfish population, there you go, Scott. Mm -hmm. The lake is also said to be the home of a unique and ostensible amphibious creature, the likes of which has only been seen once, and is quite unlike any other cryptid ever reported. The encounter happened on March 28, 1959, when three teenage buddies, Denny Patterson, Wayne Armstrong, and Michael Lane, claimed to have had a run-in with one of the flat-out weirdest varmints that anyone has ever chronicled, at least in Ohio. The youths testified that they were cavorting. Ooh, they were cavorting. How bad. 
near Ruggles Road, near the swampy shores of the Charles Mill Reservoir at night when they saw a strange seven-foot-tall being rise up from the black water in front of them. The petrified boys watched in horror as this colossal creature towered above them. Later, they had described the beast as being a huge, armless humanoid with luminous green eyes and large webbed feet. They wasted no time in leaving the scene and were swift to report their unusual encounter. The description of a human or creature rising from a murky lake is very much like eyewitness accounts of the vicious Thetis Lake monster, which hailed from Canada in August 1972. Unlike the quasi-reptilian visits of the Thetis Lake monster, this creepy manifestation, which falls somewhere in the murky gray area between the creature from the Black Lagoon, a hairless ape man, and the unknown, seems quite unlike any other creature ever reported. In fact, it's so bizarre that it's more like an a mallgram of the swamp thing and a frightening early design for Sid and Marty Croft's Sigmund the Sea Monster than an actual biological entity. When police made their way back to the reservoir to see what all the commotion was about, they discovered a series of tracks that resembled the footgear worn by skin divers along the shore. Despite this apparent confirmation that something with large webbed feet was skulking around along the edge of the lake, there are no subsequent reports of this armless beast with glowing eyes. Esteemed cryptozoologist Lauren Coleman, who I would love to get on my show, just saying, even chronicled this bizarre aquatic humanoid case in his 1985 book, Curious Encounters. He described it as basically everything I just said, so I'm not going to repeat all that. And Oh, apparently he had, he had glowing orange eyes. That part they didn't say in the first part. So, yeah, I don't know. I mean, not saying that I wouldn't be scared, but if it's got no arms and it's on land with webbed feet, <laughs> you'd have a fighting chance, wouldn't you, to, you know, trip it up and outrun it or something? Like, I would think that's a severe disadvantage to not have any kind of arms. And apparently, these to this day, they find, uh, like, the webbed feet footprints from time to time in front of the lake, so, or the reservoir, <laughs> so... Who knows? But I just had to pick this because I need to have something that wasn't a plesiosaur. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty hard. Yeah. So, I, what do we I, think? Believers, non-believers, what? Oh, I believe well, put, definitely. There's some shit. Uh, there's tons of shit out there we don't understand, right? I would imagine there are huge things out there we don't understand. Well, but these guys, like these reptilian men. Oh, guys? reptilian men now. Um, I'll leave those for Jeremy. <laughs> if I do meet one, I want the one with the arms. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. I'll take the reptilian women. Deborah got the reptilian men. Come on, Scott. <laughs> yeah, you guys go for it. I'm, I want to catch me a plesiosaur on my fishing rod. No, there was yeah. actually, um, there was another story. It was done in kind of like a inquire style local newspaper where, um, Somebody said that they released bull sharks in this little lake about an hour away from my house. And the lake's pretty deep. And, like, there's people, they think the the bite marks are from tiger muskie. But, like, mm. you're only legally supposed to use one inch by one inch cut bait. But just, like, when I caught my biggest catfish, I think I'm going out there with, like, a, you know. <laughs> A dot hook and some steel leader and we'll just <laughs> and a whole carcass and over he goes. <laughs> yeah, I'll just throw half a half a carp out there or a full white bass or something. <laughs> See what's going on. Hope the game warden doesn't come. But could you imagine <laughs> catching one of these things? Like what's you've... your boat? What kind of boat are you in? Like some little in a kayak. Like... God, like that's brave. <laughs> well, you don't, you've never seen people fish sharks in kayaks. By the time you get them up to the kayak, that thing's basically dead. Or it's pulled you over, and you are <laughs> no, because you you've got uh, you know, they're pulling drag and shit. Oh, so you're just you're just going for a ride until they're so exhausted they can't. Oh, okay. Yeah, now you're talking. <laughs> so you just sit back and drink some beer while it tires itself out. <laughs> yeah, you know, go for. I mean, sometimes some of these people who fish like marlin and shit, they yeah. get dragged like four miles out into the ocean before the thing tires out. 
Isn't that is is a Merlin where you have to strap in on the ocean boats or whatever you're seat yeah, belted in? <laughs> if you're on the ocean boat, because the Marlin's not pulling that thing. But when you're on a kayak, you just you know keep fighting it, letting on. it drag, tire it out until it dies. You're good to go. Huh. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> I think we could do the same with sea monsters. That's all. Well, you go get us Ogo Pogo. I want to. I want to. I want to see a real. Well, I'm interested to see what they come up with the DNA. If that was a carcass of one or whatever, I think that's well, interesting. Put it this way, Scott. I am now inspired to do a lake monster slash river monster bracket in the future. <laughs> okay. There's I, a lot of them. I couldn't believe. You know. I know. Day, I, I was like, oh my gosh, there is a ton of these things. So there's, it's got to be real. It's always t- the things that have to be real, right? When they're all over the place and they're all being described the same. There's got to be at least 32 of them. So. <laughs> well, and like that that first lake I talked about, that thing is 2,000 feet deep. Yeah. I doubt it's been researched that deep. You know what I'm saying? No, none of these lakes have. That's the point. No, I was just watching before we got on. I was watching a thing about Lake Tahoe and how this kid made his little remote consult, uh, remote control submarine with a GoPro. And that was the first time the bottom of this deepest part of the lake has ever been seen because the one other exploration that went out was like some college and they had technical difficulties. So, like, this kid just has basically a thing he dropped down to the bottom of the lake with the gopro footage so like what do you think they've been doing in a 2000 foot deep lake like i doubt they've been to the bottom of that shit i doubt it so when when people do deep sea diving like in the ocean and stuff like can you just jump into a, a lake or do you need permission to do that or oh i'm sure you'd need all sorts of permissions because like that lake is state um, right. It's a state reservoir, so you probably got to go through a whole bunch of shit. I mean, but you also got to think about it. The amount of extraterrestrial ships that have come out of lakes in the last 60 years is creepy as hell, including Lake Tahoe. Something's down there, I would think. I would think something's down there. <clears throat> I mean, UFOs are known for popping out of the water, especially in the West Coast. Hmm. You'd think more people would just be, is it different deep sea diving or, or you know, um, like the equipment and stuff, is it different fresh water no. to in the ocean or whatever, the pressure and stuff? I don't I know would, anything. I've never done it. So I would imagine it would, you wouldn't need any of the salt water shit, but like, let's, I'm going to Google how far, how far can you go in a scuba suit? Because I, I bet you, you would need like specialized equipment after a couple hundred feet mm-hmm. probably uh scuba suit god you'd think somebody'd be attempting this right mm, unless the government doesn't allow you to go there and do it and that's why yeah so you're you're deep the deepest your typical recreational scuba diver can go is only 130 feet <laughs> That shit's 2,000 feet. There's something down there, just like in the bottom of the ocean. There's, you know, there's all sorts of weird ass. The Meg. I bet the Meg's down there. <laughs> I bet. Someone's oh, got to and... figure out how to get down there or how to get some equipment down there to. We're wasting all this money, make believe saying people are going into space. You think we can waste some of it? <laughs> Explore the planet, yeah. Instead of sending well, farmers to space. <laughs> Deborah, what what's our topic next week? Isn't that oh, lady wow. coming on? Well, she's coming on, yeah. I think we have it covered, don't we? Oh, that's the 18th of Oh, shit, it is. Yeah, okay. Um, it yeah. Is. Yep. yeah. So next week is creepy Christmas. And creepy Christmas. And are we start we starting an hour earlier at eight, Scott, or are we gonna start at nine? Uh, I don't know. Like, if you want to start an hour early, then maybe we should do. Like, how are we doing this? Are we doing a, an extra episode for Christmas or? Mm, I, I, um, why don't we go off live and talk about it? I say, yeah. not give away our secrets here. 
we'll our Christmas presents to you. the listeners. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. Well, we'll see you next week. One more. Have a good week. <laughs> okay, what do we got here? Stop and live stream.